is this <laughs> it's messages of hope <laughs> <laughs> messages of hope well i i personally think that dreams are one of our best resources one of my books is called sark's journal and playbook and the subtitle is a place to dream while awake because honestly i think we're living in a dream this show is a dream and what we're talking about is a dream well, I'm glad my dream includes you today. Oh, thank you. And I hear there might be something in the crayon. Oh, the crayon, <laughs> yes. And this crayon has traveled around the country on my book tour. And you really, everyone ought to travel around with a large purple crayon. <laughs> You wouldn't believe the things that happen. I mean, I you have take this on airplanes. Oh yeah, and I had it's it's actually has some wounds from the uh, from the overhead compartments. But <laughs> I had a, a, a beautiful pregnant woman ask me to bless her, and so Aww. I put the tip of the crayon on her stomach. And I had a man on a park bench ask me to put the tip of the crayon on his journal that he was working on a book, and he said it would really help him. And so now you can take the tip of the crayon off, oh just boy. pull, okay, and then take um, what's inside. There's a piece of paper inside there. Ooh. And Aww. then you can read that. It says, every time you write something, valuable will occur. Every so time you write. Let's try that again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pause. I mean, there's no punctuation, so it could be read a number but of different that ways. That is true. Every time you write, something valuable will occur. It's Aww. true. You know, our minds trick us into thinking too much about writing mm. instead of actually writing. Yes, I love that. Oh, that's darling. Thank you. You're what welcome. What else has happened with the crayon? Oh, my <laughs> I have goodness. a feeling you have more stories. Well, yes, I've been doing um, purple pen blessings um, to anyone. I, I do events, and you know, hundreds of people show up, and, and then I ask who would like a blessing. And so then I make up a song and a chant, and I have them stand, and I, I just create a blessing. And um, so I've just been having incredible adventures with you know, the purple pen blessings. Well, it sounds to me like you live in this inspired, fun, juicy state, literally. But I'm just curious, how do you create that moment to moment? That's a great question. Everyone can develop um, what I call like, um, it's, it's like, it's like a, a different kind of vision. It's like looking and allowing for miracles and tiny adventures and things to find you. And we can all do this. And all it takes is looking around and noticing. And I always remind people, like when you're going to the store and you think you're buying milk, that's not your only mission. Your mission is to notice who's there, to notice. You can be an uplifter, you can touch someone else in that moment, and that leads to other moments. And so everywhere we are, everywhere we are, can be magical and have, and have really, you know, it's, it's, it's developing that vision. And the more you develop that vision, and I talk about this in the book, develop a story habit because then stories will cling to you like magnetic dust mm -hmm. and you'll always have them and you'll always be telling them and you'll always be noticing them. Oh, I love that. Can you share with us some magnetic story that's occurred lately or yes, something? Yes, yes. I can tell you that I was in a restaurant recently and there was a little girl sitting at a table nearby, she's about seven, just presiding over the table and telling the story. And the two adults that were there were really listening. They weren't pretending to listen. They were really listening and engaged. And I was really touched by this. So I took a little piece of paper, tore a little strip of paper, and wrote, you are magical. And then I uh, um, folded it all up, and I wrote, tiny note for you. And then I got up, and I went over to the table, and I presented, I gave this little tiny note to the girl, and I said, I don't know if you read yet, but this is for you. So she took it. She handed it to what I found out was her dad. And he opened it and said, it says you are really magical. And you are. And so she was just beaming. And they were leaving the restaurant. And she stopped at my table. And she said, thank you for giving me that note. And I said, what did it mean to you? And she said, it meant that you really saw me. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how little, in a way, we're all seen, right? Right. Or how we forget. Yeah. And, how, and how much we forget that our seeing someone can matter. Yes, and acknowledging them, which is also what I'm hearing, is a message of hope, is to acknowledge people yes. for who they are. Yes. That and that more. Yes. <laughs> and rest. Rest. So let's talk about rest, because we are such an overworked, overcommitted society, right? Yes. And come on, you're a busy woman, too. How do you find time in a day to rest, to well, live I don't, it? I, we, we don't need that much time. I mean, you can rest very deeply in five minutes. Mm -hmm. You can really get into it. You, you can meditate. You can do so much meditation 
in five minutes and quiet your mind. And that's really what, what we want. We don't need to have two-hour naps. And people, oh, I don't have time. And that's all made up anyway. Mm -hmm. So to be too busy to be creative or restful, right? Yes. I know, it's kind of crazy, isn't yeah. it? So you're just saying it, take it in five-minute chunks. Oh, I'm saying even less. You can do a one-minute rest. I have a whole process of, that I invented called micro-movements, and I write about it in most of my books, um, helping people do more in smaller amounts of time. Can you give us a, a juicy tip? Well, I can, I can say that micro-movements work because they're incredibly simple, and they're, it's not, it's, um, it's uh, let's give an example. Uh, um, many of us have on our list clean the closet, but it never gets done because basically we don't want to do it. And that's okay, we can also not do it. But if you do want to do something, you, c you might make a note um, on a little scrap of paper um, and you put a date and a time, you know, Saturday 2 o'clock, open the door to my closet. Now it sounds incredibly simple and you may just do that. You may open it and say, oh, it's worse than I thought and close it. Or you may open it and then think, it's not as bad as I thought and spend the next several hours sorting out your closet. Or you may close the door just like you just did your micro movement and you'll choose another one which might be Tuesday at 4 o'clock, take five pairs of shoes off the shelf and look at them. And mm -hmm. your mind, this begins to develop what I call a habit of completion. Your mind doesn't care what, the, um, what the, the actual thing is you're completing. It just cares that something's getting done. So if, when you start to build those up in your mind, you will then start to complete more things than you don't complete. And before long, you no longer procrastinate. I no longer procrastinate. And so it's, it's a wonderful system. All of my books have been written with micro-movements. I love that because you've produced 15 of them. I mean, you're, yeah. no, you're no slouch here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I rest a lot, and I read a lot of uh, wonderful books, and I watch a lot of movies, and I take long walks, and I, you know, I do, I, I take exquisitely good care of myself. Mm, I love that. And, and it's inspiring. Yeah. What's one, I mean, you've been out there for a long time, famous, making things happen, writing juicy pieces. What's one of the most amazing stories that have happened to you? Oh, my gosh. Well, there's Try so to pick many. one, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, how, you know, I'm just trying to think of what would be the, you know, I can't think of. Um, even in the past year or even, but uh, I suspect there's some really amazing things that have happened to you, even if it's a seven-year-old in the restaurant. Or oh, I, I count those as, as my, uh, I, uh, all the things from children to me are just, they're really amazing. I get a lot of mail from children and they take their parents' books and then they write me letters. I just got one from a little girl who was eight who invited me to an author tea at her home. And then she wrote, P.S., this has actually already happened, but my dad told me to send this to you anyway. Aww. And I just love that. I just love that I had this vision of the dad leaning over going, she'll like that, send it to her anyway. You know, and I did, and I immediately wrote her back, you know, because there she was sending me an invitation to her author tea. Or two girls, you know, have this inspiration phone line. And I've had it for 15 years. And it's a phone line that you can just call and be inspired or have hope. Or you, it's me talking for five minutes. I sometimes sing. I sometimes read poetry. And um, it's a wonderful thing. And it's called the inspiration line. And um, so, like I say, people from all over the world call it. I listen to it. It's, it's, it's an absolutely magical transference of energy. Well, I got this call from these two girls who invited me to the wedding of their kitten. Oh. And they were having this <laughs> special wedding, and they wanted me to come, and I have this whole invitation. Mm -hmm. And so, lo and behold, I go to Atlanta on my book tour just recently, and they, were, they, they had said, we're in Atlanta, we're going to come. And so I'm giving my talk in the First Existentialist Church, which is an, another amazing place, and there's about 150 people, every seat is filled. I'm going to do a purple pen blessing. I ask for who wants one, you know, about 80 hands come up in the air and I just look out and energetically pick a person she comes up and it's the girl with the kitten wedding oh did the kitten wedding already happen well actually it was it was a little bit of a sad story because one of the kittens did mm -hmm. die mm -hmm. and they told us that but she brought her best friend up on the stage and they shared that story but having read Sark books and having read succulent wild woman the kitten married itself uh -huh. so now the kitten is married to itself because oh. I talk about doing that, to marry yourself. Oh, that is so beautiful. I know. Oh, 
<laughs> and if people want to email you, what could you share that with us? What's oh, the they way? could they could contact me at succulent friends. That's succulent s u c c u l e n t friends at gmail.com. Wonderful. And if you want to also know more about Messages of Hope, you can do messagesofhope.com slash Jill Lublin. Well, would you share with us some of your, what I might call, most uh, favorite Messages of Hope, even if you steal it from your own posters? But I love the wisdom, the messages that you keep bringing. Any good, shall we say, one-liners, juicy, juicy liners from Sark, Messages of Hope from Sark? Well, I would say, uh, I would start... I mean, immediately the, the lines of um, how to be an art artist come to mind. Um, stay loose. Learn to watch snails. Plant impossible gardens. Invite someone dangerous to tea. Make little signs that say yes and post them all over your house. Make friends with freedom and uncertainty. So those are some that come right to mind. I love those. And it's funny because you talked about the tea. Isn't that interesting, right? So yes. it does come with that. Yes. And you've led such a uh, dynamic life. You know, when, when you uh, wake up a little sad, we'll call it, or a little whatever, um, what do you do? I have uh, a most marvelous self-love practices that I really recommend to everyone. And I wake up now and spend at least five minutes hugging myself and telling myself how much I love myself. And it's, it's amazing what happens when you do that. And then I go through and thank all of the parts of me, all, all the organs and cells. And, and then I write in what I call my glad book. And I write all the things that I'm so glad about. And I have a whole process for when I'm not glad. Um, and then I do a little meditation. And by the time that's finished, I'm so filled up with love and so ready to give more love to whoever I come in contact with. Hmm. And so I really would say, to really fall madly, truly, deeply in love with yourself. Every single day. Every single day, yes. Yeah, this isn't just like once a week. <laughs> oh, no, no, many times in a day. Because it's easy to love ourselves when things are going well. Yeah. It's not as easy when we encounter things that we dislike about ourselves or we find that we're not the ideal person or we find that we have, you know, we have made mistakes. Things have not gone as well. and. So how can you turn towards yourself with love during those times, too? And that's the practice, building that foundation of exquisite self-care and then really turning to yourself with, with that self-love. Thank you for sharing with us tonight, Sark. And thank you for joining us. We hope you've been inspired with messages of hope from me and Sark. Good night.